Hello, Dr. Uche, your Dr. Booktuber, back here again to hang out with you. I am so excited. I had to talk to you after a jog. This is Colorado, it's cold, it's getting cold. So, so excited to be here with you in my jogging attire, but I just had to tell you about what I just finished reading, Sankofa. Sankofa, fabulous book, fabulous book. Chibundu Onuzo is the author, and it was just recently released. Sankofa, highly recommend this book. So let me tell you about it. But before I do that, remember to hit subscribe so that you'll know when I upload new videos. And again, I talk about what I'm reading to inspire you on your reading journey. And I am Dr. Uche, I'm your doctor, booktuber. All right, let's dig in. Sankofa. So. This was a great read. I really enjoyed reading this one. And it starts off with a woman, Anna Bain. So the book revolves around her. She's the main character. It starts off with her discovering. So she lives in, in the UK, in London, I think. And she discovers um, a diary that belonged to her father. So she is of mixed race. Uh, she has a British mother. Welsh mother, let me say correctly, Welsh mother, and an African father. And there's this, I think it's a fictional country, Bamania, because I, I have not heard of such a country. Bamanian. So Bamanian people from Bamana, I believe the country was called Bamana. And uh, that's where her father came from, was a student in England at the time that he met uh, her mother and they had an affair, the mother got pregnant, the father left, did not know he had a child in uh, England. So, Anna Bain uh, grows up in the home of her father's, fa her mother's uh, family, her mother's uh, um, uh, family with the sister, the mom, the dad, these are the people who raised her. Uh, she had a very humble upbringing uh, growing up in, in such a family. Her father, on the other hand, went back to uh, I, I hope I'm saying this right, Bamana, I believe, went back to the country where he'd originally come from and ends up that he uh, actually got into politics and fought for independence and then became the first president or was a prime minister of this country and was in power for like 30 years or something like that, married and had his own family in his home country. So somehow, um, Anna Bain comes across his diary, the diary he kept when he lived in England. At the time, he was called Francis um, a Gray. Francis a Gray is what he was called at the time he was England. He was in England. And so she starts reading about this man who is her father, and she starts wanting to know more about him. Sadly, her own mother who raised her, the Welsh woman dies. She dies from some horrible brain cancer. So Anna Bain and this, at this point has been married, has a daughter who's about 25 and um, is gone, you know, left home doing her own thing. And she is, she's been a housewife. So she's trying to rediscover herself. Uh, her husband uh, had uh, been unfaithful and she was trying to work through a divorce. So she decided, okay, I want to get to know my father. She starts to hunt around and research people who had known him, had some people who helped her along the way. And she finally figured out that this guy is alive and I'm going to go back to the country to see him. So she goes back. <laughs> she goes back. She shows up at her father's door with this gentleman who is an old friend of her dad's, who is a British guy, an old friend of her dad's. And uh, he throws this out to this ex-president that, hey, I'm your daughter. You left me behind <laughs> in England when you were a student. You dated this woman. You had an affair with this young woman who was very young, only about 18. And she got pregnant, but you left. You didn't know you had a child. You never wrote. So you never heard about me. And of course, his first reaction was to be very annoyed and to basically tell them to leave my house and they left but you know they had refreshments they had some drinks and 
turns out that he got some DNA testing out of her cup, the cup she sipped out of, out of. And so he realized that yes, that is in fact my child. So he gets back with her, uh, contacts her through, um, I guess an assistant of some sort. And he starts getting to spend some time with her. And he actually really embraces her as, as, her as um, his daughter. She starts to meet some of his children with the woman from his home country, the second woman he had children with, uh, his wife, the woman he married. And they're all grown, but Anna Bain is older than all of them, right? He had her as a young man, and then he went home and married and had these younger children. So she's an elder sister to all of them. And they eventually meet her one by one. The meeting is not smooth, you know, especially one daughter in particular, Afwa, I believe was her name, was not very happy to get to know her in the first place. Uh, but eventually you see them mellowing down and starting to embrace her. Yes, you're our sister in our culture. There's no such thing as half sister and, and whatnot. You're a sister, you're a sister, finish, period, that's it. So, but it's very interesting how she interacts with her dad how there's some issue. So this guy was in power for 30 years and, you know, some things went wrong under his uh, leadership and he did some good things, but he also had some uh, um, critics, people who weren't happy with certain things he did. And somehow Anna Bain, this daughter, meets some of his enemies and people who don't really like him and she gets to hear the other side of things so she confronts him about certain things um so she's an elder daughter she meets this man as a grown-up she doesn't have this fear or shall i say deference you may have for somebody you knew as a child who raised you so he didn't raise her he just met her as a grown-up right they're both grown-ups talking so I think she's better able to confront him about things than the children he had after he'd gotten back to his home country, um, who had a little bit more of that respect for her father and perhaps the African culture. We all know there's, there's a big thing about age and it's not always that way in the Western culture, uh, Western cultures, I should say. So she confronts him and it's a very... <laughs> odd event where he puts her through a lesson in a way. <laughs> so he gets her, he, he, he arranges for Anna to get arrested on her way out of the country back to England. It's all very odd. Um, something to do with a Bamanian passport that he had arranged for her being in fact a passport that put her on a no-fly list and questioned how she even got such a passport uh, Passport as a British citizen, citizen, how she got it so quickly and on what grounds she, she was entitled to that. And it's very confusing stuff. But whatever the case, he arranges for this grown 50s, I think, daughter of his, to get arrested, to spend time in a, in a jail. And we get to learn he's done it before with a son, one of his sons who was stubborn and not quite listening and he allowed him to be arrested over something to teach him a lesson. We get to see, this is how this guy deals. That's, that's, how, he, that's how he functions, right? He doesn't like to be crossed. He doesn't like to be confronted by his children. But whatever the case, you know, there's a bit of a wrap up near the end where they end up, Anna and her father end up being very frank with each other. And uh, shall I say they, they learn to understand each other better? The book ended for me, it ended prematurely. Like I wish she had written, uh, written more. I wish the author had written more uh, to tell me how they continued after several events that happened near the very end. And, um, also, she ended up, Anna ended up going through some sort of ritual that apparently young girls go through to become women in the, in the Bamanian culture. And somehow she ended up doing it as a 50-something-year-old woman who had returned home.
and did it obviously very late in life. This is how it wrapped up. And I felt like the author could have written 10, 12, 15 more chapters telling us a little bit more about what Anna Bain ended up doing, having reached a better understanding with her father, I guess, um, not necessarily approval of his style, but an understanding of this is who this older man at the time now called Kofi Ajay, this is who he had become. I'm reading this diary about a Francis a Gray who lived 50 years ago and people change. Goodness, I've changed in five years, talk less of 50 years. So her better understanding of this older man who her father had become and acceptance because in life you have to accept people for who they've become. I would have loved to have read more. I wish she had delved some more into um, I wish it written more after that. I wish it crafted a, uh, for the plot to be longer than it was. But I found it to be a, a, a nice story. Um, I thought it was a mixture <laughs> of many nations. A lot of the names sounded almost Ghanaian. And then we all know of heads of state of various African countries, I won't name any, <laughs> who were on seat for decades. So I feel like the author tried to merge so many things together to uh, create this fictional country. Um, uh, gosh, some sad aspects. I mean, I can't imagine how it must feel to not know one parent and to have to discover them as an adult and find that they had a life after you, a life that was actually privileged. Uh, the children he had later grew up privileged and she grew up uh, quite humble. And there was a part where you could tell she was a little bitter and sad about it. Um, so I'm trying to think of uh, what else. I, I think that's it in a nutshell. I did like the book. I'd encourage you to read it. I'd highly encourage you to read it. And again, it's Sankofa by uh, Chibundo Onuzo. So again, Dr. Uche, your doctor booktuber, please hit subscribe and like and follow so that you'll know when I upload new videos. And I will see you next time I show up to discuss a book. Take care. And uh, I hope that you and your family stay well and safe. Take care. Bye-bye.